people don't realize that, you know, a unique outfit is going to take time and it's not a mass production. So it's going to cost a little, but it's also going to be so unique that nobody else has anything like it. Hi everybody, Ageless Ambitions on Lux Media Studios. I'm Christy Buss. I am just thrilled and just so excited for you guys to meet a special person that I got introduced to through a special friend. And she's beautiful, stunning, and just the best that you can put on an entrepreneur level of just being so innovative in the way she does her fashion. She is the founder and CEO of Angel Brinks Fashion, and I'm just so excited for you to meet her. I'm so happy to, that you're here with me. Yay! What an introduction! What an introduction! <laughs> and <laughs> we didn't even bring up that you're on TV and does Basketball Wives and all that, but yeah. um, for me, I'm just thrilled that you are an entrepreneur, you're a woman, you you have children, and that you're just ambitious, and I just want to know what your backstory is and then what you're really wanting to do in your future of not just your fashion, but anything else that you have thought of and want to do in your life. Wow. Okay. So I launched my company 13 years ago. Well, this April. Okay. Coming up years. Um, and, you know, it kind of just started out at home. My grandmother was a sewer. I spent a lot of time with her because my mom worked all the time. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just took a liking to clothing and really understood at a very young age how clothing was made. And, you know, growing well, up. It's not just family... clothing. You, your, your stuff is just, it's just, it's the epitome of just like gorgeous and just top of the top. It's not just you know, a little top here and there. These are innovative ways to make somebody look so glamorous if they're pregnant, if they're, you know, doing a big scene on a concert like Mary J. Blige, Cardi mm -hmm. B. I mean, these are huge, huge, like costumey clothes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that takes so much thought and process to be innovative with that, right? So right. you started young and you just love clothes and you just wanted to, did your mom, did, it was a grandma sew? Did she sew? Yes. My grandmother had a sewing machine. She was sewing in the house. Um, and, you know, I always got hand-me-downs. I had an older sister. And so although my, my family, you know, they, they you know, made a, a nice living, but we never felt it. You know, we never knew that we had it because I always felt like we didn't have it. You know, I was getting hand-me-downs. Um, we would shop at thrift stores and stuff, you know. So, you know, I, I slept on the couch. Like, I didn't have my own room till later on in life. Did you um, have so, Did you have brothers and sisters, obviously, like, a lot? or? Well, no, actually. I just had an older sister. Old, oh, so it was mom. just two of you. Okay. Yeah, it was just the two of us. But my grandparents lived with us. And then ah. there was my mom. And then when she divorced my father and she remarried, um, he had children. So it was oh. kind of like we were like the Brady Bunch family. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But. Yeah, but you know, I, I used to go to vintage stores, cut up jeans, um, start coloring them, dyeing them. I used to dip leggings into velvet and just really just be, was very creative. And I just loved my stuff so much that I would actually wear it. And people would be like, Where did you get that? That's kind of interesting. That's unique. I'm like, Oh, I made it. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of like how it happened. And then I ended up making a business for myself. But really, what really what was the kicker was I was a part of the performing arts in school. Okay. From sixth grade all the way up to a senior, I took drama classes. I took dance, dance? classes. You know, because I'm a dancer, classes. right? You know, yeah, I am a yeah. dancer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and that's great. And, um, you know, when you're on that stage and you wear, like, you know, performing Costumes and clothes. stuff, right? Right, costumes. And at that time, growing up, like, that wasn't really, like, it was only for the stage. And we had like a lot of lycra spandex, but it was flashy colors and sequins and stuff. And I was just so excited. I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. So I started implementing sequins and patches and different things on clothing. And then as I got older and hit the red carpets in L.A., that's when I really nailed it. That's when celebrities saw me out and they were like, oh, geez, where'd you get that? That's awesome. Can you and make that for me? Right, right. Because it's so unique. Nobody else has yeah. it. So yeah. and that's the hardest thing in L.A. is to have two people wearing the same dresses, right? So it's like, right. we don't want that on the red carpet. So, right. this is, right. so okay, so you, did you go to college for this? Because, you know, my niece went to school. She went to Otis College for fashion design. 
And mm-hmm. so she, she did the same thing you did, like loved just creating outfits when she was younger and stuff like that. So did you go to school or you, this is just like, it's almost like it's somebody that knows to learn themselves how to do the piano or something. Is that how you right. did it? Oh, right. no, okay. Actually, yeah. I went to fit them. I went to, fashion. Oh, you went to fit them. I did. I okay. Did. So, you know, I Otis college, college, right? <laughs> Huh? You know, you know, Otis College then, because that's yes. kind of like the, the two. So fit them. You went to fit them. Wow. I did. Okay. But rapidly um, after that, I eloped and got married. And so I kind of took, I kind of paused. Um, cause I, Don't we I, all sometimes like give up what we're doing? <laughs> yeah, because I, I, you know, growing up in a strict, I'm Armenian. So growing up in a strict Armenian You're not family, Armenian. Do you know my, you know, my boyfriend played for me, Armenian basketball. Like he, he really? so yes, we'll talk about Overseas, it later. Right. Yeah. Yes. Oh he won a championship there too at Bahakni city. So there oh you go. God. So wow. Armenians are like a big part of our life. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you, um, so I know that, that type, like Armenians are very tight knit families, right? They're yeah. very close. Yes. So especially, especially at that time too. I mean, now I'm so happy Kim Kardashian came and sort of put us on the map because growing up, nobody knew what Armenian was. Um, but yeah, I mean, my mom was like, the only way you can leave the house is if you're going off to college or you're getting married, even, ah. and you know, even when you're in college or after college, you kind of stay home until you get married. So I sort of went against the grain and eloped and got married. And then I, my life took a total turn. Um, but deep down inside, like I, I always had that feeling of fire. Like, like, yeah. That passion. I'm like, I, I really want to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ended up doing it and it was like, it so you went to fit him for just a little bit of time and then you, then you stopped, but then you got back into it on your own. Well, I know I, I went, I completed. It's oh, just that when I went, well, I guess what I was trying to say with the whole Armenian family thing is um, <laughs> that love, you know, it was, it's like, you want that love and attention. And I think mm-hmm. I really wanted that like from a guy, you know, I got course, you, you know, being 20, 21, 22, you know what I mean? So I was like, gosh, like I really wanted to do the family thing. I really wanted to be loved and I wanted to start my own family. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. And it's like, you know, like I thought, okay, maybe I'll just be a, a mommy, a housewife and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But that didn't work out. And so when that didn't work out, you know, I was very, yeah. very depressed and speaking to, you know, getting support from my family and friends, I ended up jumping back into the game and then here we are. Um, right. Right. So- and it's like, it's like big, like, this is like, how did, I mean, to, 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 you know, clothe and dress somebody like Hardy B and then Megan the Stallion, you have mm-hmm. to be like on top of it. You have to have the most amazing outfits to, you know, make them shine because that's who they are. They're they're kind of out there. They want to be they want to be seen as nobody else like them. And right. that's how you fit in. Right. You know, it's funny because we look up, we look to them um, for the trends, right? Like, oh, what did Beyonce wear? What did Cardi B wear? What's so and so wearing? You know, but ultimately, what they're wearing is something a designer designed most likely six months ago. So we're actually oh. the real trendsetters because ah. a lot of the stuff that we're putting out, we already came up. Like, so for now, like in the spring, summer, as designers, we we design for fall and winter, and in the fall and winter, we're already thinking spring and summer. So we're already ahead of everything. Now, granted, sometimes artists do come and say, okay, I want this. And they give you a lot of direction. So it's not necessarily, they're not necessarily wearing something from your collection Mm -hmm. and you're just making them a custom look. And that's how I actually decided to go in this path was Beyonce. She wore these boots, she performed. And I was like, God, where did she get that whole outfit? I need everything. (laughs) Um, This is while I was still, you know, in the process. And so I was like, oh, that was Roberto Cavalli. So I went, I'm like, can I get the outfit? What part of the collection is this? Like, no, it's custom. So Uh I couldn't have that. So I said to myself, when I become a designer, I'm not just going to design for celebrities. I'm going to make everybody whatever it is that they want, because you can actually walk into my location and say, oh, I want, for example, turtleneck dress, long sleeves, all the way to the floor, cutouts over here. And I can do that for you. A lot of times you can't just walk into a designer and get that Beyonce Feel. look or, right. yeah, you know. Right. And then, so, so you have your own store too. I do. I do. Where's I that at? Tell me about it. It's, it's uh, 16719 Roscoe Boulevard. It's actually right across from the Van Nuys Airport. Okay. Um, so it's in the Valley. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you just call, you can make an appointment and um, basically you can sit down with me and we can go over it, what it is that you want. And usually I get a lot of prom, you know, Ooh, uh, that and with, yeah, prom dresses and stuff like that. Yeah. I've so, had girls fly in with, from the, with their grandmothers or moms, like this big thing. I'm like, gosh, where were you when, where was anyone like me when I was going to prom? You know, like I didn't get, I didn't have a designer just make me something. So I'm really, I'm really a, a diamond that I think a lot of people don't know that they have, you know, you can actually sit down with me. You can come sit on the same couch, little Kim, Cardi B, come and sit on and tell me whatever it is that they want. Like that I'm so open. great. You're yeah. approachable. You're approachable. I am. Right. I and am. the thing is yeah. like you were uh, saying something on Instagram, like people, okay. You asked me why this stuff costs so much. So I'm going to take you through it. And then it's yeah. all about the cutouts and then the people mm -hmm. behind it and the sewing. People don't realize that a, that a, you know, a unique outfit is going to take time and it's not a mass production. So it's yeah. going to cost a little, but it's also going to be so unique that nobody else has anything like it. And that's right. something that, that is important to, you know, for people to understand. It's not like you're just charging up the yin yang or whatever it is. It's based mm -hmm. on the people that you have and who you are that bring out the best in the, in the quality of you were saying the sequence or whatever it is, you get the best. It takes you time to go look for that stuff you know, the mm -hmm. materials and everything. So that you are so smart. Thank you so much. You actually really understood the video. I wasn't sure because I'm like, you know, a lot of people don't really understand the process. So I'm so glad that you, you understand. And, you know, it's hard to get that like, message out. It's it hard is. to get that message but, because I'm going to mm -hmm. speak on, you know, a little bit to myself because as a skincare line, right. That you know mm -hmm. about, it's like, there's so many skincare lines out there, but why is mine different? Well, it's about the quality and it's about the quantity within the ingredient. That's going to take you to another level with your skin before anything else does. That's just over the counter. But people right. don't want to pay that price because they don't, they don't understand it. So mm -hmm. you're going to get quality. That dress is going to last forever. And you can probably even tweak it to make it even look a little different each time. But, yes. you know, you, you got to understand what you're paying for. And so that's why I appreciated that, that video at the mm -hmm. time when you were presenting it, it was, you know, that's the education that people need to mm -hmm. understand why a brand is so uniquely different and can be very popular based on that. Right. So basically, um, when you when you mass produce, um, normally you make small, medium and large. Well, right. what I saw in the United States, a lot of women are not small, medium and large. Mm -hmm. Some women are small here and large here. Some women are. I large wish I was small here and large there, but that's not the case. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, no. but yes. I mean, yeah. Well, you know, we're all built differently, right. especially nowadays. You know, right. women are working out more. They're having surgery. They're doing certain things, getting their bodies together, and so sometimes it's really hard to put your hips through an outfit. You know, to get it to be tight here and bigger here. So you have that option with me, and that's why on my website certain items say made to order, which means when you click that, you can actually say, you know what, I, I know myself and I have very big arms, for example. So I'm going to ask if you can make my sleeves two inches bigger or whatever it is, you know, nice. or you can actually FaceTime us and show us your problem areas or whatever. And then we'll note your account. So when we're making that, we'll cut a little bigger so, or, or we'll take in the waist or we'll make it bigger, you know, whatever it is that, you know, that is a problem you can just start your order that way. And I think that's the problem is people are like, well, why does it take two weeks? Two weeks is actually two not a long time. Two weeks is very short time. That's exactly. hardly anything when it comes to custom made, right. right? And especially since there's stones and fringes and a lot of that stuff is handmade, you can't just run it through a sewing machine because you'll break your needles. So we have to hand place things. So sometimes people just really don't get that. And it's frustrating because it's like, look, I don't, I don't want to hold on to the dress. I want you to get as fast as you can. You right. Know? So, so then you can move on to, to another thing. Right. So it's exactly. Like, so, okay. So exactly. fashion is very, very big. And, um, you, you know, you've been on TV, you know, uh, yeah. you know, I'm in the basketball world too, but I was yes, never sir. on the basketball <laughs> wives, but uh -huh. that's okay. You're just glamorous anyway. Um, so how is that? How is that within your life? I mean, does that, do you love it? Do you like it to be on the basketball wives? Is it well, do you show your okay, fashion so off there? I did, I did, I did date a basketball player and, okay. um, two and a half years into dating him, I got pregnant and we had our daughter. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's Tyreek Evans. Um, he was rookie of the year coming in. What, what, um, what, what team did he play for? 
Tyreek uh, Evans. Yeah. Uh, he played for Sacramento Kings. Okay. For, um, Sacramento. For, and then went to um, New, New Orleans Pelicans. Okay. Uh, where he played with Anthony Davis, you know, and then after that, he went to Indiana. So he's been um, around. He played a little bit. A, a lot yeah, he of played for okay. 10 years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I was very much a part of that life because when we were dating, um, you know, he was gone here, there, you know what I mean? So I saw that this is something that you have to be very strong, you know, because as women, I think we're, you know, we're needy a little bit. We want to have dinner with our guys every night. We want to watch TV, we want to cuddle, you know, things like that. So I saw that it was, that was a, a thing. But I was so busy with my career and it's, it just boomed that he was busy and I was busy. So when we had time, we would, you know, link up, obviously. And, you know, that was my my boyfriend. And so when my daughter came, you know, things, you know, there was so much from the outside world. A lot mm-hmm. of girls were messaging me, writing me, you know, just saying all kinds of things. And it actually ended up, you know, I mean, of course, it's, it's always a man. You can't blame other women. But, you know, we we had a lot of issues. Um mm-hmm. But that's that's a tough no. life, you know, because I my, my actually my boyfriend's a basketball player, too, but he's only really played overseas. So he's okay. probably more, you know, it's not as, you know, prominent to be a basketball player that is playing overseas. But I know what it takes to be on the road and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure that it's a lot different in the NBA, you know. Yeah, but it's I mean, it's still the same. They're still playing. They're still gone for holidays yes. and things like that. So you find yourself alone a lot, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but I still had a daughter with him. So I would fly out to some games and when he had like a home stretch and things like that, we were there um, courtside, you know, and it was very exciting for my daughter to see that, Oh, look at what daddy does, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so that world, you know, I'm still very much a part of as long as, you know, my daughter. Right. So, right, um, right, right. Yeah. So So do you think that helped your, um, your fashion career or do you feel like you already had that going? You know, it's really funny because 50% of people that approach me or talk to me know me as a designer and 50% like know so me. So it's, it's like even. From TV. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, but okay. No, so- I mean, you know, it, I, it, it was easy because I'm, just because I'm not, I wasn't married to him. I still have a child with him and that's just almost, well, I can't say that it's the same either. But, you know, when you have a family with a basketball player, then it's like, you know, you're still very much understanding. You still have somewhat of the same issue. So I kind of thought when I was coming around the girls in the very beginning that we would all kind of talk about that or, right. you know, help, help each other get through some of the hard times, you know? Um, but, but there's a lot, in, there's, I, there's, there's a lot of drama on there. And sometimes yeah. that's, that's, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes reality can be so hard to, you know, make it be something very positive because you want to show off your career or something, but, but mm-hmm. the, they want the drama, the reality wants yeah. the drama. Right. But I, mean, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I mean, what do you think? I don't know. Like that's, that's, this is your, this yeah. Is your... I mean, I think we all sort of guilty of that when we okay. are on the other side of the TV watching something, you're kind of like, Oh, this is so cool. You know? But I think ultimately when people are watching TV, majority of the time I feel like they want to be entertained they want to kind of be taken away from whatever it is that they have going on in their life and I think as a reality tv star we mm-hmm. are actually known for being us we're not playing a role right, right, right. I mean some things sometimes some things may be staged you know certain situations that we know you know on reality TV, like, okay you guys have to go here so we know where we're going and things like that but um but ultimately, like, you know, I think a lot of people on the other side of the TV are like, wow, like, I'm so happy. I'm, I don't have their life. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like, I, I, yeah, I like when I was watching stuff like that, it, it was interesting to see the glamour. And that's what you brought, I think, like to show off. You, you had a, a show where um, you got to show off your designs and it was a big party for your for your um, kickoff of your I don't even know if it was for your uh for your uh, store or something, but it was, was just it really ago? a positive thing. It was a while ago, yeah. I think, but, okay. but it was something positive. Like you were, you had something <laughs> going on. It was like your ambition and your mm-hmm. uh, way of still using your platform to show that you have a great background in fashion. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if you, if you could do anything, like what's your, what are you looking forward to? Like, what do you want to do since you have so much going on in your life? Um, Mm -hmm. and people look up to you like I, I do. So I was just wondering what you are looking forward to with your ambition and your passion for your future. Well, when I started my business, I could have just called it, I don't know, 
bubblegum apparel or whatever. But I knew starting my company that I wanted to be a household name because I basically, you know, named my my brand under Angel Brink. So my name is stamped. Like I wanted girls the same way they like, oh, look at my red bottoms, red bottoms, Christian Louboutin. You know what I mean? I wanted to be that. Like I'm wearing Angel Brinks. Like when I stamp my name on something, that means it's approved, you know, like I'm like basically the shit, you know? So, um, yes, so I definitely, yes, right. you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I, um, that's pretty much the goal is to, you know, eventually be in department stores to have multiple stores, to have flagship stores, you know, that kind of thing. Like just, you know, do shoes, bags. And just I can't really wait grow. for you to be that. I can't wait for you. To, I can't you. wait to go to your openings of all the places that you are looking mm. forward to having your beautiful line Thank in. You. And it is the most beautiful line that I've really ever seen. And I really appreciate seeing it and you being a part of my show. And I, I just thank you so much for spending time with me. I hope that everybody gets to learn more about what you have to offer. If you need a wedding dress, maybe, or, yes, anything, or any special occasion, special you know? occasion. Yeah. That's what we want. I want you to be able to, to help anybody that is looking for, just glamour and beauty and individuality for themselves. So thank you. Anything else you want to say before we go? Oh my goodness. Well, um, well, Christy, thank you so much. You know, I, and I admire you as from woman to woman, you know, as you know, like business is so, it's so difficult, you know, it when, is, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a man's world, right. You know, but, um, Absolutely. We're, we're dominating, you know, um, and I just want every, as women, we should just build each other up support yes. one another, you know, that's a thing that we don't really have these days, you know, but we're all in this together. Um, there's enough money to go around. And if you have an idea that you have a niche, like with your skincare, you know, how, how yours is way better than other products, you know, for me with my clothing, I know, I, I know I got a niche, so I'm, I'm taking off with it. So if anyone out there has a Love dream it. or just knows what, what will take the cake, go for it. Full, Thank full you for throttle. saying that women power. Yeah women yeah. just women supporting other women mm -hmm. that's what we're all about and that's what i wanted to get out of this and you brought it up and i thank you so much for that thank you thank, thank you, you so angel much. for being fun. here okay <laughs> i'll you. see you and thank you everybody for watching ageless ambitions on lux media studios we're so glad that you're here and please look up angel on all her social media we'll have it down for you so you can see it bye everybody Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.